Good day, uh, friends. Uh, today I got a host for you. His name is Barry Stone. I believe he is one of the best Bible uh, teachers that you have. And today he's going to explain to you from his perspective what is a Jubilee. I did explain the Jubilee already in previous uh, posts, but I would like you to hear it from a very well-known evangelist, preacher, teacher, uh, Perry Stone. Um, enjoy the video and afterwards I will be uh, back again. In a location that we have never in 14 years taped on a manifest telecast, only because when we're on our tour, we're usually traveling directly from Galilee to Megiddo or Megiddo to Galilee, and we don't have the time always to stop and make a tape. Look here. This is where the Pope spoke when he was in the Holy Land sometime back. 40,000 Christians from the Holy Land and pilgrims from around the world gathered here. This is the city of Nazareth. Now, I'm going to point out something in a moment from a sermon that Jesus preached. His first public message was preached in this city. But I want to tell you something. It was not a city the size of what you're seeing now. As a matter of fact, you can see a hill that is right directly in the middle of this beautiful community of Nazareth. And in the Bible, it tells us that the city was built near the edge of a hill. And Jesus preached a message that made people so mad, they tried to push him off the cliff and just actually kill him. And uh, we don't know exactly. Uh, they have a tradition as to where the 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 city was located. There is a building, you can see it in the distance here, that's a church. Uh, they say that there was a well there. There is a spring of water there. They call it Mary's Well. And that somehow it was built on that, that uh, area up there because an old synagogue was discovered. But what I want to key up on today is the sermon Jesus preached. And I'm going to talk about a word called Jubilee. Jubilee. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4 for those of you that may follow me. You know, in churches, I used to say, open your Bible. Now it's go to your iPod, go to your phone and get the scripture. But here's what the scripture says, that in Luke chapter 4, Jesus is in the area uh, near Jericho in the Judean wilderness, and he's being baptized by his cousin John at the Jordan River. Now he spends 40 days in that area, and uh, during that time, we know that the uh, mountain of temptation uh, above Jericho is uh, not too far. I think they told me if you walk it straight, it would be about 18 to 20 miles to the Temple Mount. We know Satan took Jesus to the Temple Mount area and told him to cast himself down from the pinnacle of the temple and that the angels would supernaturally protect him. Of course, Jesus did not fall into any of the temptations of Satan because the Bible tells us that he was tempted in all points as you and I, yet without sin. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about and he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood for to read. Now again this is the synagogue where he was raised as a young boy for, for we, would, we would estimate if we look at the biblical timing probably about 25 years or so. He, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it's written. Now, Isaiah is on a very large scroll, and you have to turn the scroll to find the place where to read. This tells me Jesus was very familiar with the scripture, very familiar with what it said. So he finds this place. Now, what I'm going to read to you, what's going to come on the screen, is a passage of scripture found in Isaiah chapter 61. Now, this is, this is what Jesus preached that day at Nazareth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, in my Bible, there's a period there at verse 19, which you see that on the screen. Now, verse 20 picks up and says this. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. Then he said, and this is what really got him stirred up. Then he said, this day, uh, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now, if you keep reading the story, when Jesus began to teach the, from this and saying, now today this is fulfilled, 
he really starts stirring up. I'm talking about in a major way, everybody in the synagogue to the point that they wanted to kill him. So they ran him out of the synagogue, as we said earlier, to the edge of the city and tried to throw him off of the cliff, but supernaturally God protected him because the Bible said he then, passing through the midst of them, went his way. So Jesus was spared here in his own hometown. Now, the bottom line about Nazareth was that the scripture says that he could do no mighty works in Nazareth because of their unbelief. This is one of those places. I think one of the other translations or a minister said one of the other translations could read there he could do uh, no, no uh, significant miracles. There he could do no great miracles save he, he healed a few sick folk, just minor ailments. In other words, people with minor ailments, nothing great. And it was because of the unbelief of this city because they saw him growing up and they said, who does he think he is, even though he's doing miracles. Now, here's the point I want to make. In, I, in Luke chapter 4, he quote, Jesus is quoting from Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3. And in verse 18, if you, and I, I, I use traditionally the King James translation uh, when I minister because that's what I learned to quote as a young preacher when I was 16, 18, 20, 25 years of age. But uh, the point I, looked, uh, I want to show you is in verse 19, Jesus says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And there's a period placed in our Bible correctly because he stops his thought. If you were to go to Isaiah chapter 61, where this particular verse is quoted, and look at uh, the verse, I'm going to read this to you again. This is the authorized King James translation. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening with the prison to them that are bound. Now that's very much what we read in the, in the New Testament translation. To proclaim the acceptable of the year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now, if you'll look at this very carefully, Jesus did not quote all of the passage. He cut it in half. He just stopped it short because here are the two themes of verse two. I'm coming to bring to you an acceptable day of the Lord and I'm coming to bring to you vengeance from the day of our God. You have to understand what the term acceptable year of the Lord means and understand what the, the phrase vengeance means as it relates to the prophets of the Old Testament and as it relates to the Torah, which are the five books of Moses. Let's start with the day of vengeance. In the Old Testament, there's a word vengeance, which is used extensively in, in different scriptures. The day of vengeance, the vengeance of our God, etc. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I shall repay. In the setting of the word vengeance among certain prophets, they are dealing with the great tribulation, which has not yet happened, which is coming in the future. The day of God's wrath, the day of God's judgment, and the day of vengeance. Now, if the day of vengeance was something which was going to happen in the future, because let's say when Jesus preached this message, you know, it's been well over 1900 years to where we are today, well over 1900 years, you know? And so if Jesus was coming to bring vengeance to the people, he would have completed that statement and said, and I've also come to bring vengeance. He knew that vengeance is not why he came the first time. Remember this. The vengeance side of God is connected to Jesus being the Lion of Judah. A lion is, has authority. A lion has power. He's introduced, Christ is, in the book of Revelation, as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, when he's about to open the seven seal book and introduce judgments upon the earth during the tribulation. Now, he came the first time as the Lamb, and the Lamb came to shed his blood to bring the word redemption, Redemption to mankind. Redemption is to redeem a person out of something. In our case, it was Jesus redeeming us out of the hand of the devil, out of the hand of the enemy. Now, that's the vengeance part of Isaiah 61 and right around there, around that, around here, uh, down here. And uh, I said verse three earlier, it's actually verse two. All right, what does it mean the acceptable year of the Lord? The acceptable year of the Lord in our Bible is a phrase that would have been known to the Jewish audience and that phrase is called the, the, the Yovel year, the year of the blasting of a shofar for the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee, let me talk to you about this for just a little bit. First of all, there were what's called sabbatical cycles. The first sabbatical cycle God established was the Sabbath day in which every seventh day people were to cease from labor and to rest. The second sabbatical cycle was every seven years. Now this is called the Shemitah. And the Shemitah is when every seven years you let the land rest, you let the animals rest, and you do no work. So what God would do is on the sixth year, he would supernaturally give you such an increase of, of uh, fruits and vegetables 
and farming, you know, the, on the land that you could live on the seventh year without ever having to plow. You know, I, hey, American people would vote a guy in that says, hey, every seventh year, there's no work. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, live off the government or whatever. They'd all, yeah, put him in, you know. But this was actually something that was established by the Lord every seventh year. Now, what they would do is they would count cycles of seven years of seven. Here's one seven years. Let's say I'm born, okay? I'm born, let's say, on a Jubilee year. Well, I, if I live to be 60, I get another Jubilee. Here's how it goes. I'm seven years old. The seventh year is a Shemitah year. I'm 14 years old. That's my second Shemitah year. I'm 21 years old. That's my third Shemitah year. I'm 28 years old. Are you with me? Now I go seven years. That means I would be 49 years of age. But in your Bible, it's called the Jubilee in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. And on the Jubilee year, the silver trumpets would sound on the 10th day. It would be the uh, seventh month, the 10th day, which was the Day of Atonement. And when those trumpets would sound on that Day of Atonement, what would happen is that, that there would be this freedom declared among the people. If you were a Hebrew slave, you were permitted to go back to your family. If you had, uh, let's say, lost your property because of, of a terrible business or uh, someone had bought it and you lost your property, you would be able to redeem your property back on the Jubilee year, as long as you could provide a will that proved that it belonged to your family. And the Bible says you're not to oppress, oppress one another on the Jubilee year. So this is, this is a fascinating thing because if you look at it very carefully, the Jubilee was something every Hebrew looked forward to. They looked forward to Shabbat because they could say, wow, hey, it's Shabbat again. I don't have to work. I don't have to go milk the cow. I don't have to go out. And, you know, I heard one guy preach and said, I'm saying this funny. He said, and I don't have to go out and feed the pigs. I said, oh, he missed that message bad because Jews don't, Jews don't touch pigs, okay? Just, just so you'll know, they did feed no pigs back then. But anyway, he kind of messed up his message. That wasn't me, by the way. I just want you to. Amen. There you heard it. Right from Perry Stone. The acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance. He explained it well to you. That is the tribulation. And I believe that is what Christ was referring to. And I believe this was a hint, a hint to us and another clue to when the Jubilee will end. Yes, they wanted to kill Jesus. And I always wonder why would they wanted to kill Jesus for bringing and speaking the acceptable year of the Lord. But I believe the reason one it was because the Jubilee was never uh, observed in the day of Israel. Uh, that is after, after they went uh, into exile and they came back. It was never observed because according to uh, uh, Leviticus uh, 25, all the people were not back in the land, and yet Jesus came and He declared, This day it has been fulfilled in your eyes. And uh, of course, that is our rescue, our salvation uh, that Jesus was referring to. Uh, nevertheless, uh, how old is the earth? The 120th Jubilee, the final Jubilee is not 2017, 2018, as many uh, believe today. I explained uh, on the uh, previous video uh, why I believed that 2017 was, but after it didn't come to pass, I examined myself, had a lot of questions, and I finally, I did the research on it and uh, praying about it. And I think I finally got the answer uh, to that question. The 120 Jubilee, the final Jubilee is not 2017-18. Many of us believe 2017-18 was the final Jubilee. Ben Samuel's prophecy has us to believe this. This is one reason why most of the watchmen believe that Christ would return, uh, include, uh, uh, would return, including myself. God gave us everything in the Bible for the end times. He tells us when to expect Him. He tells uh, us a man's number of days will be 120. And that does not refer to, uh, uh, to age at all. 
He said, I will not always strive with man, for his days will be 120. That is the 6,000 years, the 120 jubilees that he is referring to. 120 is a reference to the 120 jubilees. My spirit will not contend with man forever, for his mortal, his days uh, uh, shall be 120. Genesis 6 verse 3. We all... We all are fooled to believe uh, 2017 was the, the 6,000 years. However, it is not. I searched deep into the Word and got the clue in the building of Solomon's temple. He leaves us clues in the Bible. The book of Daniel also gives us clues of 1,260 uh, and, and days and actually twice. That is for the two witnesses and then one 1,260 days from the uh, abomination in the temple and then 2,520, uh, 1,290 and 1,335 days to come during the tribulation. These numbers of days tell one exactly the length of time the two witnesses will be on the earth and when Yeshua will return for his second coming. Now, if we find the correct season, we can expect Yeshua to return that year. Watchmen on YouTube and Facebook run around like clueless chicken hens, and I'm sorry that I have to say it without a head. I hate this everyday uh, dates, uh, blue moon, the red moon, uh, 153 days from from, from uh, Revelation 12 sign, uh, Obama here and there, and what have you? The rapture on summer solace to, uh, June 21, 18, and uh, when it doesn't happen, this person uh, uh, put it back, back to the next. Uh, if it doesn't happen in June, the date has been changed to July. It's just not on people. I do not believe. Uh, uh, as Christians, we can go on like that. Yes, we need to be watch, uh, 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 watchful, but I truly believe it is not right. Uh, this is ongoing for the last five years. God gave us His appointed times, Leviticus 23. Yes, we must, wa we must watch for His coming and live for Christ. I don't see these people teaching some other subjects. It's just on the rapture. And I believe people are being paid, paid to mislead Christians uh, ab about the, the rapture and they're getting tired and they're getting weary, especially the new ones. And um, I apologize for last year, uh, as dates that I said, uh, um, and I did say it many times, um, if I cause you to stumble, my humblest ap apology. Some believe the rapture can happen any day, any moment. That is not true. Yeshua died on the day and hour, not a minute later. And I believe it will be the same for the rapture. Yes, we can die uh, tonight or tomorrow or any day. There, uh, therefore, we must live every day as if it is our last day. Now, when will Yeshua return? The key to this is to know, uh, uh, to know this, is to find out when the 120 jubilees expires. And many scholars say there is no way, no way that that can ever be worked out. Yes, there is. It's in the Bible. You just need to search for it. And I believe that the Bible has been tempered, uh, uh, tempered uh, so that um, we cannot find a day. But there are many clues uh, uh, that can tell us that. And 2000, 2018 is not the 6,000 years people. If that was the case, Jesus would have been here by now already. He would have returned already, not even the rapture. He would have returned back to earth already. And here it's plainly 
uh, uh, in Genesis 1.31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The sixth day, people. After the sixth day, after 6,000 years, Jesus will return. And as we heard from Perry Stone, uh, uh, that have reference to what Jesus preached there about the Jubilee is uh, during the end when he returns in a Jubilee year. Jesus will return on the end of the sixth day. The pre-tribulation rapture happens seven years uh, before the end of the um, 6,000 years. Daniel gave us 70 weeks, 69 of those, uh, those uh, years, which is 483, has been fulfilled. And when Christ died on the, on the cross, there was a pause for 2,000 years. And the last seven years, the last seven years, that's called Jacob's trouble. It's called Jacob's trouble, which is part of, uh, part of the, of the, um, of the, of the jubilees. So that will play out in the, in the, in the end of, the, of days. And the, the, uh, Israel will get saved out of it, you know. So uh, there you have it. Before It will come before the end of the 6,000 years. Not the end of the 6,000 years is not at the rapture, but at the end when Jesus returns. Please, uh, uh, um, just receive that. That is the that is the correct. Uh, I believe that is correct. Not believe that is the correct way. We are currently in the year five nine nine one from creation. Two thousand and seventeen is now the end of the six thousand years. I will explain how I arrived to this date five nine nine one. The creation year is 3973, and most scholars date it at uh, 4004. They add another four years because uh, um, they believe Herod uh, died at, at 4 BC, but Herod didn't die at 4 BC. He died at 1 uh, BC, uh, 1 B, uh, BC. In that year, Christ was born 3 BC. And the uh, wise men came, uh, that's how I got it all in the video, they came nine months after, after 11 September 3 BC. They came to Jerusalem and they asked Herod, where is the king uh, that was born? Because we seen his star uh, in the east. So um, the creation year is 3, 9, 73 BC plus the age of grace 2018 gives you 5991. So you can actually, uh, uh, fr from the Jubilee in 1827, you can deduct that from the 4000 years and then you can also get uh, uh, 3973. Now we have reached the 70th anniversary of Israel. We have nine years, three months as of today's date left to the second coming of Christ. We have two years, three months to the rapture from today's date left. Read Psalm 90 verse 10. And this confirms what I am stating to you, what I am teaching you right now. It confirms the word. And uh, I'll give it to you in my conclusion again. Now, reasons for knowing the age of the earth. We need to know that the Bible is our guide in this life. In all things, we need to follow the Bible. If there's any question, the Bible has the answer. Even in the area of science, God has not left out what he wants us to believe concerning the creation of this world. He has given us everything we need for time 
uh, and uh, eternity thereof, we know He has also given us all the facts we need about the creation of the world. It tells us everything what is going to happen in the, uh, the end times, the seven seals, how bad that is going to be in becoming worse with the seven trumpets and the seven, uh, seven vow, uh, vows. Everything is there. He tells you that Satan will be locked up for a thousand years. He tells, he does not hide anything. It's only the day and the hour that uh, we, we do not know. Uh, but the season we may know. But I believe 2017, 18 is the wrong season. But with the science is uh, the science is there right before your eyes. I agree, and it and it and it looks as if Christ is coming now. But I believe Christ is returning in a jubilee year. We can have the confidence that the Lord will soon return. In Second Peter three one eighteen, the Bible states that scoffers will be, will begin to say the Lord has not returned. And will not return because all things continue from the beginning of the creation. These scoffers are not telling the truth, of course. First thing are not first things are not continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. God created the earth in six days, people. He created the earth in six days, and I keep on repeating myself, he is coming back when the six thousand years expires from the day that he created the first the day the second day the third he is going to return and thereafter he will rest from creation now after january i found this verse in in uh, in 1 Kings uh, 6 1, the date for Solomon's temple as 6 966 uh, before Christ. But I'll explain to you now how we arrived to 966 uh, uh, before Christ, how uh, I arrived to that, uh, that date. And then simply adding it to 480 years. 480 years is in first uh, kings uh, 6 1 and it came to pass in the 480th year uh, after the children of israel were come out of egypt in the fourth year uh, uh, of solomon's reign over israel in the month of Zith, that is um, months were called differently in those days which is the second month uh, which is the second month now, God, God's calendar was not uh, 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 names of anything, but it's called Zif, it's called the second month, which is uh, moon month one, moon two, moon three. That is how God's calendar worked in those days, which is uh, April, May, uh, uh, that he began to uh, build the house of the Lord. Now, it was established that the fourth year of Solomon's, uh, uh, Solomon correspond to 966 before Christ. Uh, uh, before Christ, Solomon's fourth year does not appear in the Bible. I got this information from Edwin R. Theo in his book, The Mysteries, Mysterious Numbers of the Hebrew Kings. He gives us, I tell you, this is accurately a uh, number the dates for the uh, for the kings and it adds up precisely it gives us the most thorough evidence of the accuracy of this date by Babylonian records which can be astronomically verified and I'm going to show you towards the end uh, that it can be verified we highly I highly uh, recommend uh, um, this uh, a book for full explanation. In uh, order to arrive at the date uh, of Exodus, he uh, took this date, which is uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, seeds uh, to Jerusalem of 586 BC, the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, and added it to the years of the kings of Judah after Solomon. 
Of course, Solomon was the third, ki the, the third king of Israel, so it wasn't difficult then. These years of reigns totaled 345. 586 plus 3, uh, 345 brings you to 931. This brings us to the last year of Solomon's reign. That was the last year. Remember, he reigned 40, 40 years. Uh, since we know Solomon's reigned 40 years, this means in his first year would have been 9, uh, uh, 970 BC. Note that the counting year of uh, reign, we uh, must be sure and count the first year. To say he ruled from 971 to 931 is incorrect, even though you are adding 40 years to his first uh, to his last year of reign, uh, 970. Uh, you must subtract one year f uh, from your uh, total to take into account the first year. With his first year of reign as an, a 970 BC, this would place his fourth year at 966 before Christ, the year he began to work on the temple. Yeah, and this is uh, 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 verified, of course, not verified. That was Solomon's temple. Uh, I'm talking about Herod's temple. Thinking, of, uh, get mixed up with Herod's temple. Yeah, okay. Uh, Herod's temple uh, began actually in 19, 19 BC because it took 46 years to build. That is another clue as well to the, uh, you know, to Christ, uh, when Christ started his ministry. Yeah, and it is from this date that we arrive then at another date, the date of the Exodus 1 Kings 6 1. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year, of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Zeph, uh, which is the second month that he began to build a house. There you have it. Therefore, the date of the Exodus must be 966 BC plus 480 years. It gives you 1446 uh, uh, BC. That was the exodus from Egypt. And since the crossing of the Jordan took 40 years later, you just subtract the 40 years from uh, 1446 BC and you get uh, 1406 BC, crossing of the Jordan River. Israel entered the Promised Land in spring uh, 1406 BC. That is a near Nisin Abib which is when the Jubilee counts begin. And this can be counted forward and backwards, and it will come to the year that Christ started his ministry. This, of course, was the Jubilee, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the ju ju Jubilee, uh, the Sabbath. You get this Jubilee Sabbath, and then the Jubilee year. I'll explain to you in a minute. Yeah, important reason for us to understand the Jubilees is that there is an obvious parallel between the Sabbath and Jubilee years and the Sabbath weeks. Now, what is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Sabbath? The Sabbath is the 49, the 49 years, and the fifth, uh, Jubilee is the 50 years, and the Sabbath weeks is the week, the, the seven, uh, seven day, uh, the, the weekly, uh, weekly Sabbath. And Pentecost, in that they are counted alike. There are seven Sabbath of weeks, which is 49 years, uh, 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 weeks, and then there is Pentecost on the first, 50th day. There are seven Sabbath years, which is 49 years, and then the final year, uh, final year is the Jubilee in the 50th year. I'll give you a list uh, uh, in, towards the end, and I'll explain uh, to you the 49th year and the and the 50th year. Here's another example in, in Ezekiel 1, uh, 1 verse 2. 
This, I didn't find this. This was uh, found by Mari, uh, Mari Kessel, Kessel. Yeah. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Cheba, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God in the fifth day of the month, which is the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. I notice in particular the phrase, the 30th year. What is the 30th year of? In the Liberty Bible Commentary, the proposed interpretation of the 30th year are listed. Number one, the 30th year, Jehovah King, 585 BC. Secondly, the 30th year after Josiah's reform, 593-592 BC. The 30th year of the New Babylonian Empire, 606-605 BC. The 30th year of Manasseh, 670 BC. The 30th year of Texas. Uh, uh, triple one, three to uh, uh, eight BC. Number six, the thirtieth year of Ezekiel's age, and then the thirtieth year of the Jubilee cycle. Ezekiel forty-one strongly indicates that this is the thirtieth year of a Jubilee cycle. Why? Ezekiel forty-one in the first and twenty-fifth year of a captivity in the beginning of the year in the tenth day of the month in the fourteenth year after the city was smitten in the self same day the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither in the vision of God brought me into the land of Israel and set me upon a high mountain. The thirtieth year, as we saw above, was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. In Ezekiel 41, the twenty-fifth year of the captivity was when Ezekiel saw the visions of the future temple. The fifth year to the twentieth year is twenty years. Now the thirtieth year, which was the fifth year plus twenty years, is the fiftieth year or jubilee. Therefore Ezekiel saw the vision of the future temple, which shall be built in the kingdom of God in a jubilee year. That is when Christ uh, 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 returned. We know that the, the, fifth, uh, uh, the fifth year of Jehoiachin captivity, the 30th year was 594 593 BC. The Hebrew year for that is 3168. So the 25th year Jubilee was 5725-73 BC. Uh, then the Hebrew year is 3188. This gives us an accurate date, a benchmark from the Bible itself for the counting of the Sabbath and the Jubilee year, backwards and forwards, in addition to the 30th year, connecting to the vision of the new temple in 572-573 BC. It, is also, uh, it also happens to connect backwards in the time of Josiah. The reforms, you remember that King is the age of eight years old, reform that took place in 622, 623 BC, which would be at the previous Jubilee, and we will start our list from, uh, from that year on. Now we can connect Ezekiel's uh, benchmark 572, 573, and look for benchmark 26. Uh, uh, AD, the year just before Christ started his marriage, perfectly. If we use the 50th uh, year cycle counting method, using this method, 26 AD is a Sabbath year, and 27 AD, the year that Christ started his ministry, what Barry Stone just read in, uh, previously was in 27 year, year just after uh, he was baptized by uh, by John the Baptist. That was probably in August. Remember the uh, the days of old, 
It's a 40 year uh, period where the, the Jews fast and pray and Jesus went into the desert uh, and he fasted and he was tempted and then he came uh, came uh, out of the fast and that was uh, that was on the uh, the the day of atonement Yom Kippur in Nazareth that he uh, was reading that statement that the teaching that Barry Stone gave you and 27 AD is the Jub Jubilee now here is the Sabbath and the Jubilee years list I didn't do this it is also by um, uh, uh, Mary the Sabbath Jubilee years from the 30th year in 594 uh, BC Ezekiel uh, uh, 1 2 to Jesus' baptism, uh, which is 27 AD, the first year of his ministry. 27 AD. Now you count 2000 years to 27 AD, you reach to the 20, uh, 2000 years is 40 Jubilees. And to that day, Jesus will return also in the, um, uh, in the, the month of um, uh, Yom Kippur in that, uh, in that time. He may return a little bit earlier because of all the, the bodies and all the, uh, all the chaos. So preparation is most probably needed. But uh, having said that, there's a, there's a dispute about that. Not a dispute. Uh, he'll turn, uh, return exactly seven years from from the uh, the first rapture and then he will return then on a jubilee year it is a jubilee year so he will return during that time it will not happen on on uh, pentecost as some people believe and yeah etc so uh, yeah then uh, these are the uh, this started off from uh, Jos uh, josiah king josiah uh, that this the, this year would have been the Sabbath year, and this is the jubilee the jubilee year. Remember, the Sabbath year was from uh, Jesus' time was from 26, 26 to twenty seven A.D. And uh, here you f uh, follow the uh, follow the years through, and the, that's the next uh, Sabbath, the next seven uh, seven years, and all the line, and I just put it down a few years so that you can uh, uh, follow it through so uh, you can pause the video back to and throw and uh, then you can uh, watch it yourself here so um, here's every jubilee year uh, counted off and marked off from and this is actually this is shortest route because it's too long to show from the day of creation from the day of creation, 399, uh, 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 three, uh, be, before Christ, and it goes right down until the day of Christ's uh, uh, ministry. And then even right until to, uh, 2027, when Jesus would return. Please don't come with that story, no man knows the day and the hour. It's only the day and the hour we do not know, but the season, season we can know. It is all in the Bible, people. I'm not making a date 20th of uh, uh, September 2000, and what the same in the hour. Okay, so uh, these are the um, uh, jubilee, uh, jubilee years. And the Sabbath Jubilee years, the Sabbath Jubilee years ends then on uh, uh, on uh, that is 2025. Uh, they remember counting down uh, down. What's his name? We going up uh, up again. Down it was counted down from three nine three uh, double nine uh, three uh, nine uh, three double nine seven three, and it is counting downwards. So. Uh, the 49 years is a Jubilee Sabbath, and then the 50th year concludes uh, the Jubilee. So uh, I hope you understand or grasp what I'm uh, telling you. So then we are right here at the final, uh, final, um, final year, 
which is 26 uh, to 27, 6 to 27, as you remember, there is a year missing there, the, the year missing, uh, miss, uh, the naught missing there, so that year made it up for 27, 27, 28, and conclude the, uh, the, um, the Jubilee. The, the Jubilee year. 26 to 27 is the Jubilee Sabbath and then 27 28 is the Jubilee year. The year is my conclusion. The creation year is 3, 9, uh, 7, 3 uh, BC uh, plus the age of grace uh, 2018 uh, equals 599 one, we reach the 70th anniversary of Israel and like I said we all thought the 70th year the rapture would take place before the 70th year is out and that is why including myself believe it it would have been 2017 we have nine years three months as of today's date left to the second coming of Christ we have two years three months to the rapture from today's uh, date left, read Psalm 90, 10, as it confirms what I'm stating, Psalm 90, uh, uh, 10, it says the days of a year are three school years and ten, and if by reason of strength uh, they be four school years, yet it is their strength, uh, labor and sorrow, for it is will be soon cut off and then we fly off. It says, yet is the strength, labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and then we fly off. If we use a generation of 80 years with years of labor and sorrow, which is a tribulation according to Psalm 1910, then the year for 1948 generation, as Jesus has stated, to be over is 1948 plus 80 years, which is 2028. But Jesus said that, um, and I know many of my friends uh, disagree with that, they say it is 70 plus uh, 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 seven, uh, seven years which is 77 years. The, the Jubilee, the end of the Jubilee is 2027. It would end just one year short. Uh, then Christ would come and say, it will not pass away. Taking into account the seven year tribulation period, that would place the latest year for the rapture at the beginning of the great tribulation to occur as 28. Uh, minus the seven years gives you 2021. That is only three years from now. Yeshua said it would not pass 80 years. The rapture could be 2019. However, the heavenly sun show uh, 2020. See my last, uh, this is my last video, the, the previous video that I uh, did. Uh, watch that video as well. And I know many people do not agree with uh, the signs in the sky. I'm not uh, doing astrology people. I'm not reading a cup. It's all uh, biblical. Uh, Jesus uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned it in the Bible and a great sign appeared in, the, in, the, in the heaven and another sign appeared which is the dragon. It's all in the Bible people. I just want to show you something uh, interesting. There was a solar eclipse in the creation year of four, uh, the fourth of August. Sorry, that was not fourth of August. I uh, correctly uh, um, go on to correct that. It think it was on the twenty fourth or the seventh uh, month three uh, nine seven three. We go there now with all the planets lining up in Leo. We have another solar eclipse ending six uh, the six thousand years or the jubilee. And I'll just show you that too quickly. And let's show you the previous one. So here is the three three nine seven eight, and um, uh, just move the time now. Uh, this is on the eighth, the eighth month uh, that we go to the so seventh month. Sorry, uh, let's get it up for you there. 
and uh, that will be uh, the 24th I think the 24th so uh, just get what so there's a solar eclipse I just want to show you there's a solar eclipse right there on this day on a day of creation that could be the fourth day of creation I do not know um, I'm still uh, using Stella, Stella Lauren to find out which was the first day and second day um, of creation. So here you can find all the planets lining up here, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun and the Moon, the Venus, you have Mercury, you have even Saturn in there which represents Satan and Regulus. And this of course is the king uh, planet, I hope you can all see there. Uh, uh, clearly so there was a solar eclipse on the 24th of the, of the 7th now uh, the rabbis believe that the the um, uh, uh, God created the world, uh, the world that was in uh, on Feast of Trumpets but of course it states on this date uh, July the, uh, the 24th um, I do not know about it. I don't know which calendar they uh, they checked on. Um, well, the Gregorian calendar could uh, can be off. Uh, you can comment on that. But on this day, all the planets were lining up, and then again on two thousand and twenty-seven, twenty-seven, also on the fourth uh, month. So here we have. Um, on the what is on 24th, on the 25th, uh, 25th day, Jupiter and Regulus, uh, it's uh, in conjunction. Remember, I said in the previous uh, video that Jesus came as the lamp and is returning as the lion. Jupiter is back on Leo in this day, and it's right. The sun is in ca uh, in in in, in, ca uh, in Cancer. The Venus is in, uh, there and. All the, the, the planets, uh, Mercury, of course, represent Gabriel. The Venus represent Jesus, uh, the morning star. Uh, we have the sun there. And then I uh, just, just want to show you again on the, on the second, there is another, another eclipse on that day. Isn't that remarkable? The, uh, on creation day, the world was all one continent. Of course, now it's been split. Uh, but then, uh, close to to the end of the of the of the six thousand years, there is another solar eclipse. And then you have Jupiter still in uh, in, uh, in in Leo, uh, Venus in uh, in again. This represent. Uh, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, and this, of course, represent the Bride Jesus. Amen. So that's it, folk. Uh, that's all for today. Be blessed.